Welcome back. I'm Alfred Lamrot Weber, and again we have the extraordinary privilege to be uh, with our, I call him iconoclastic guest. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this word. <laughs> because uh, the, because Rafa Pal, who comes to us from Madrid, Spain, um, has written four iconoclastic books. I mean, it's not many authors that re that that can publish four iconoclastic books. That's that that's an extraordinary feat. And a new one is coming. A new oh, one good. is coming. More oh, iconoclastic. <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, uh, and speaking of iconoclasm, uh, today we continue with part two of a two-part series. Uh, and the first part was really <clears throat> on the Babylonian origins of Judaism and the uh, dualistic uh, nature of Yahweh, the God of Judaism. And at the end of part two, you may recall, uh, we said, well, or rather Rafa Pal said, well, we're going to have a part two, and that's going to be healing, yeah. healing Judaism. So, welcome, Rafa. Oh, good evening from Spain. <laughs> it's an uh, autumn evening from Spain. Well, probably you know that this is uh, the most um, dangerous topic to talk about here on Earth. And we are going to talk uh, about something that uh, uh, touched me in the deep because as i told you the other day my three teenage idols uh, were jewish in fact uh, groucho mars uh, woody allen and bruce springsteen that in fact he's a, a, a jewish but at the same time i am um, uh, you know I, I i i was born in spain that Maybe some people there in North America don't know that uh, it's the same race, the same race as Jewish, the real Jewish ones. The I mean the, the Semitic, Sem Semitic. You say Semitic ones uh, are Mediterranean and comes from Spain. Those are the ones who are called uh, Sephardites. Okay, Sephardat for the Jewish is Spain and Portugal. Okay, so that. One of, of uh, the historians, the Spanish historians, uh, not very known here that I am following, uh, that is, his name is Rivero Meneses, is saying that in fact uh, the the word Hebrew, that is not the same as Jewish, but it's related, comes from the, the river Ebro in Spain. Oh. And in fact, if you put an H before Ebro, you get the word Hebreo, that is the same as, as Hebrew in Spain. And in fact, another proof of that is that there is a river called Hebron in, in Israel, in Palestine. So that is this is another proof that uh, they, the Jewish and the Spanish, uh, we are the same uh, race. Um, well, this is a, a, a theory that has um, a lot of ramifications, but just for saying that, I am completely Semite. I am the, the best <laughs> one of the Semites, so that I am not talking about, what I am going to talk is not about race. I am going to talk about psychic related with religion. And this is my, um, my own investigation, but um, again, it's based on what the Jewish itself, they themselves are saying. The three books I have been following for this research that um, um, its conclusion was was my, were my videos, Dinero y Dios, Money and God, that is a series of eight videos, only in Spanish by, by the moment. The three uh, books, as, as I'm telling you, that I followed was, were uh, Isaac Asimov's uh, guide for the, um, Ancient Testament, okay, the Old Testament. This is a, a book from the 80s, but very interesting in the way that he, Asimov, as a Jewish, you know that he was Jewish or, or he well, is a I, 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 I actually met Asimov ah, and, ah. And, and had coffee and coffee and donuts with him. 
Ah, okay. Is he alive <laughs> still? I'm not sure, but I met him back in the 1980s. Okay. You know, as for many people, the Bible is a, a, a book uh, a little bit boring if you don't understand, you know, the, the, the characters and the, the story where it's, it's based. So that I recommend too, uh, too much this book because it um, um, makes you easier to, to understand Bible. Another book is very known, Zacharias Sitchin's Genesis Revisited, that you probably know in which he explains uh, what I, I explained it the, the other day, the, the different names of gods that explains a lot of things. The other one, the third one, I don't, I cannot uh, find it, but it's a, a book that you, you have to read it, uh, Alfred. It's called uh, The Bible and Earth, in, the, in English. The, the, the Bible, Bible and Earth, Earth, um, Desenterrada in Spanish. And oh, Earth. The, the Bible and Earth. And Earth, that's it. Yeah. Uh, Silverman and Finkelstein. Okay. Uh, it's a book in which uh, they explain uh, what, uh, you know, um, following the excavations they had made already in, in Israel, which um, places and sites of the Bible are uh, in truth as existed, and but uh, in which uh, time uh, they were, you know, dated, in fact. And they relate all these uh, discoveries with, you know, these mythic uh, uh, characters as uh, King David, Solomon, and so on. So that is what uh, the science has proved out of the Bible. It's very interesting. So that those three books uh, were, um, you know, my my knowledge about uh, Freud, of course, it's very important for me. And at the same time, um, you know. I have traveled a lot, almost 50 countries around the world as a backpacker, okay? So that in India, in Argentina, in Colombia, I have met some uh, uh, Israelians, okay? And the people who is watching this video uh, and that they are travelers um, probably um, uh, would know that, you know, when you... Uh, there is a common feeling around the world of the backpackers. Everybody, you know, meet with the, the others. Me as a Spanish with a French, with an, an American, you know, a Canadian, Argentinian, uh, you know. There is a, a, you know, a feeling, no, of being, you know, one, one nation, okay? But most of the uh, Jew of the Israelis, they get a part of the other people, you know. They make their own groups. I have met some of them, and you know, they are very nice people, because my point is that this is not a problem of race, this is a problem of the ideas, you know, and the trauma, this is my point, the, the Jewish trauma that has, they, they had put in their, in their heads, in their brains, uh, um, through religion, so that, you know, uh, my point, uh, this uh, research, uh, research started because I wanted to um, to know what the Jewish people are feeling, okay? Because, you know, when you um, watch these people and you, you, you know, you feel something, there is something with them that, you know, probably they are thinking, okay, everybody, uh, the whole world hate us, you know? But at the same time, you know, you are in a, in a party, you know, in Goa, in, in India, and, you know, everybody is dancing, that, and they are apart. So that I started to think about it, no? And, and, and all these months in this year, in, in this winter in Spain, uh, that I was uh, reading the Bible, and, you know, with these three guides, I started thinking, okay, my, my point is, you know, um, reading the Bible with a, an innocent, um, you know, point of view. Okay, with my own point of view of nowadays and knowing also at the same time that human being has not changed it. You know, this is a fake that they have been told us that, you know, the, the all uh, human being was different. No, no, no. You know, the feelings, the jealous, the war, everything is, is, is the same. But at the same time, I have, you know, my my own discoveries, well, my own, not own, but I am on this conspiracy theory movement, but for me it's not a theory uh, anymore, it's a science which explains perfectly what 
has uh, happened uh, uh, along the uh, our history. So that uh, I can I can uh, start with you know um, uh, there is a, a, a tale around the world that the, the Jewish people nowadays you know in, in Argentina and Patagonia in Chile they are traveling a lot there are a lot of stories I don't know if you know that they are getting you know the the lands there. And, you know, a lot of people have told me that the Jews that goes there, they don't respect the queue. They jump the queue, you know, they go to the hotels and they broke everything. You know, they come from the military. They, they are there three years, the, the boys and two years, the, the, the girls. And then when you <laughs> when you read in the Bible, for instance, the, that, the, you know, one of the Jewish patriarchs, that is his uh, name was... Uh, uh, Jacob, 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 and he stole, you know, the um, this uh, role as a um, Jewish boss from his uh, older brother Esau. And I don't know if um, I think that you have in in English uh, another um, uh, story. All on all said that is uh, in Spain. We say that when somebody um, sell himself for a, a, a dish of lentil. Uh, I think that you have the same phrase in English with a, 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 a box of, of, pot, of potash, or was it, I think, no? Is it real? You do understand I, Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I explained to you the story. The story is that uh, Jacob stole, you know, the primacy, the, this role of boss to his brother because he uh, buy uh, he he buy uh, ho, uh, a, a dish of lentil lentejas. Right. That's it. That's why uh, here in Spain we say uh, te has vendido por un plato de lentejas. The right. People that that comes from here. So that this this Jacob uh, changed his name into Israel. Oh, Israel. And do you know do you know what's the meaning of Israel? Israel oh. is. The one who fights against God. Israel means the one who fights against God? Yes. Ha. Yes. yes. Ha. Well, yes. then, that, that's the meaning of Israel in, in reality. <laughs> that's it. But there is another case of, of this same, uh, you know, jumping the queue because Ephraim stole his role from Manasseh. His role as you know, uh, of, of, as the firstborn, it was the you know the younger, and he stole the the, the role of boss also. So that how are you going to uh, be uh, uh, strange that the, the nowadays Jewish are doing the same all around the world? You know, in their uh, in their thoughts, in their you know ethics, they, they know that uh, their old patriarchs uh, did the same thing. You know, so, uh, so, so what you're saying is that, is that what you've noted is that people from Israel appropriate what is not theirs. Yeah. Well, that, they, I mean, uh, the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal found that starting in, in 1948, uh, the the Israelis unlawfully came in and with war crimes displaced 1.5 million Palestinians uh, uh, and just took their land by force. Uh, okay, and this is the same thing as Moses did when they conquered Canaan. And as I explained it, the, uh, explained the other day, la last day, um, well, it was Yahweh who altered him to do it and who allowed him to do it. And I repeat, if something that is called God is going to allow, you know, the, the killing, the slaughtering of thousands of people, let's think about who is this Yahweh. And I'm going to, to give you some clues to undeniable uh, clues for knowing who Yahweh is in, in himself. Okay. Um, Mm, of course, everybody knows that Moses was part of the um, Egyptian monarchy. 
Okay. Some people say, in fact, that he was a, a pharaoh because he. Okay. This will this will uh, will be another another wave of. Uh, yeah, wave yeah. Of, in in okay. fact, in fact, Sigmund Freud, the Jewish in, uh, inventor of psychiatry, wrote the classic book Moses was an Egyptian. <laughs> That's it. This is. This uh, was going to be another of my topics. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. But but this is a good point. Why? I am going to go. You know, at the point in which I'm going to take uh, to to touch after uh, later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But no, Freud knew that uh, something wrong was inside the Jewish soul, and as I told you the other day, the Sigmund Freud's work was. For me, uh, is in my opinion, it was like the the rabbi for the atheist. You know, the rabbi uh, in with the secular uh, Jewish um, operates like a, a, a psychologist. You know, in, in in the way that he helps you to to pass through your life's problems. You know, your psychic and moral problems. And Freud, that at the same time, uh, he was a. Um, um, he was um, in the in the work of n interpreting uh, dreams as his all 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 family uh, Joseph Joseph did in Egypt that it was Joseph was a counselor of the pharaoh and uh, at the same time he was you know with the treasury of the of the Egypt that is you know very strange no that he was you know the some kind of the psychologist of the pharaoh. At the same time, he was with the money. So le let's return f uh, to to Moses, okay? Because there is, uh, you know, uh, one of the mm, more important um, um, topics or situations that uh, has uh, uh, influenced Jewish uh, trauma is, you know, the Exodus from Egypt. And how uh, Moses uh, could do it, how uh, uh, he uh, convinced the pharaohs to let the Jews go out of uh, Egypt to the promised land. Well, we have uh, we've had uh, some passages that I'm going to read, but let's let's recall that the Jewish Pasqua, Jewish Pasqua, uh, that is. Be yeah, is, is, is that Passover or or is Passover, that like e e Easter or is that Easter? Uh, Easter, Easter. Uh, I, I don't know. In Spanish, it's Pascua, but uh, Pascua. it could be. It, it was the moment in which uh, Jesus appeared with the donkey, okay, in right. Jerusalem. Passover right. could be, could be, no? Yeah. Okay, this is based on what uh, happened to the mm, the Jews in Egypt uh, when you know the the Pharaoh tried to kill all the f uh, Jewish firstborn, okay? And at the end, it was not uh, this what happened, but it was the Egyptians firstborn who were killed. And there is, yeah, 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 yeah. That is what happened when, when remember, when Jesus was born. Herodes, that it was another Hebrew, not Jewish, but Hebrew king did so that is uh, is following the same ethics, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the thing is that uh, uh, Yahweh talked both to the Pharaoh and Moses. This is something very strange because if the Pharaoh, you know, uh, was uh, following uh, their own gods, such, such as. Horus or Isis or uh, uh, anything. This is very strange, but, but there is a passage in the in the Bible in which uh, I am going to to look for it. Uh, it's I think it's Exodus, Exodus, uh, 14, 4. Uh, that's it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and camp near Pi Hahirot, between Migdol and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea directly opposite 
Baal Sephon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. This is very important because, you know, our idea, idea is that uh, Yahweh was, you know, the, the, the God only for the Israelites. But in this passage, uh, um, Yahweh is recognizing that he's talking to the Pharaoh. So, uh, where does this passage uh, leaves us to the recognition recon reconnaissance that uh, Yahweh was a manipulator he was a psychopath and it was uh, from from this passage that I understood Alfred what happened in the Eden garden you know the story with the uh, with the apple that is, you know, related with the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. Remember, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the thing is that there is God, but it's not God, as I told you uh, from Zechariah's teaching, Genesis recited, it's not God itself, it's Yahweh God who uh, for... Um, forbid uh, Adam and Eve to take the, the apple of the of this tree is Yahweh God and then it can and the, the serpent you know telling them yes yes take it take it because the, you are going to know the secret of the knowledge of good and evil so that my point is that it was Yahweh the one who uh, forbid to take the apple and the one who says yes this is the kind of, of character of a manipulator as, as he did in Egypt as I proved to you before so that what was what this what was this tree Alfred and this is a very you know very innocent uh, clue that I, I discovered the tree of the knowledge of good and evil a tree with its knowledge you, that you are going to 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 have the power to manipulate the good and evil i think is the kabbalah <laughs> yeah what uh, what uh, the jewish what the jewish <laughs> what our ancestor uh, 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 adam that you probably know that for Masons and Kabbalistic, you know, the, the Kabbalah starts with Adam. So that the tree, this tree was the tree of the Kabbalah. Do you know perfectly that the Kabbalah is a tree? Is And what the Kabbalah is? The Kabbalah is the knowledge of creation, of creation at every level. I'm sure that uh, in genetics they are using Kabbalah in a way. But at the same time, it's the, it's the kind of manipulation that are they are doing with the false flags and so on. And what happened in, in Egypt and what was the, you know, the, the simple reason why the Pharaoh uh, accepted to, to put the, the Jews out. Those were the 10 plagues of, of Egypt. That was Moses with his bar and with the serpent. Remember, that is the, the, you know, the symbol of the pharmacies, of pharmacy, the caduceo. He did it with this bar and what was with our modern point of view what was this what were these 10 plagues it was biological warfare diseases it was chemtrails it was climate as harp um, cataclysms and at the end it was the murdering of thousands of Egyptians firstborns they are telling us that the real God is going to do to be the one who is doing all these nasty things to the Israeli the sorry the Egyptians no 
this kind of behavior is Lucifer's way of doing. <laughs> so that, uh, one, one point more, and we can discuss about what ha I have been told you right now. Uh, you know, if you follow the... Um, Good, good. How do you say Woody Allen? Goody Allen. Because the other day in YouTube, Woody Allen. Woody. 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 I say Woody. 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 Woody Allen. You know he's ob uh, obsessed with, uh, as every Jewish, with this scene in which Abraham ask, uh, no, sorry, Yahweh ask Abraham to cut his firstborn uh, head. Okay. And for the uh, for the Muslims in the Quran, it's not uh, uh, Isaac but Ismail. This is a, a you know a very strange uh, difference. I, I am not going to go to go on it. But the thing is that okay, think about that. Your your God is going to ask your all 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 patriarch to cut the head of what was going to be you know the the origin of your heritage. I have uh, seen a lot, well, a lot, some uh, of the Goody Allen's uh, films in which always appeared this this uh, passage, this scene. Uh, I recommend the, the public that uh, is watching this video to to look for um, the film The Believer, that is a, a Jewish that converts himself into an, a Nazi, okay? And the first scene in which they explained uh, how this Jewish convert himself into a Nazi is because when he's in the synagogue, or he's in the school, in the yeshiva, I think it's the name, uh, he's talking about these passages. And he, can, he can't understand why and how this supposedly good God is going to ask, uh, you know, his own uh, father... <laughs> to cut his son's uh, head. So what's, what's Yahweh in, in fact? Yahweh is a blackmailer. Yahweh is a, is a psychopath. But at the same time, he's uh, giving the Jewish, as we, uh, we see, we saw the, the other day, everything. You know, you as, as a Jewish, uh, you can lie, you can murder, you can steal, you have the power of using money. So, are you going to renounce to all of this, Alfred? You have all the privilege. No, you know that uh, uh, you as a Jewish, you go to Bogota or Buenos Aires and you want to open a business and they are going to put the money for you and you are not going to have any problem. But what happened if you say... No, 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 no. I am, I am, I don't believe in this Yahweh. You are going to be marginalized. You are going to be an outcast. So that this is a blackmail. So that, uh, so how Jewish soul works? In fact, well, they have this love and hate relationship with uh, their God in the way that there are some passages of the Bible that are very beautiful in which, uh, you know, the kind of veneration to their God and, you know, the moral rules they have, they are, uh, you know, authentic. Because I think that Lucifer knows perfectly that without rules, there is no civilization. <laughs> in fact, you, you, you have to have, you know, some kind of rules, because if not, there will be a chaos. But, you know, the, the kind of uh, relationship that Yahweh, ha, uh, Yahweh has with the Jewish and with their minions, the Masons and the Christian, Christian Zionists, because we can talk a little bit longer about, you know, the same influence. We, uh, it's happening with, you know, most of the Protestant uh, sects and some of the Catholics, like uh, Jesuits or... Opus Dei, or uh, Chris Legionaries, and so on. So it's not the, uh, only for the, for the Jewish. The thing is that, why Jesus? Why Jesus? What was the real uh, message and the real, uh, you know, objective of Jesus? 
Well, following this path of the lamb, you know, that I, I, I forgot to say that the way that the Jewish uh, saved themselves for being murdered in this night in which Yahweh uh, killed all the first Egyptian firstborn, you know, to, to sign that in this house they don't have to, to kill, okay, was a mark of uh, a lamb's uh, blood in in the in the entrance in the in the main door okay and this is the origin of the passover that's why it's related with the lamp and that's why the lamp is the symbol of the innocence okay so what was the moment in which jesus chose to go to um to jerusalem and getting out of the closet if you want you know for uh, uh, using a modern uh, sentence. It was Passover. And he said, I am the, the Lamb of God that uh, saves uh, all the sins of the world. What was his intention in pronouncing this? He was saying just, okay, there are not um, more necessity of sacrifice because the, the sacrifices uh, of, of children and this is the your work with, with Kevin Avenet is going was going uh, you know uh, was uh, happened along along the uh, our history. I was not only Martuk who who were uh, served with these uh, killings with these uh, sacrifices was also Yahweh, and this is the proof. And the proof is that when Jesus uh, were born, they were the same killing that uh, uh, happened in, in Egypt. Why? Because it was the same God who ordered it. So that when uh, Jesus Christ said, okay, I am I am the lamb. I am going to sacrifice, sacrifice myself. He was saying, okay, no more sacrifices, even animals, but of course uh, 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 of children, because he knew he perfectly what was uh, uh, happened along our, our history and this was you know an, a message a clear message to to this sanhedrin that they didn't uh, pass through through this message he knew they knew perfectly that this man was in the know and what jesus wanted in fact was healing healing uh, the, the jewish their family from this trauma uh, and you know and some of them realize it and some of them not but the jewish that are uh, still with this Yahweh, they are suffering suffering the same thing they are in this uh, stockholm syndrome they are uh, you know with the values of their kidnappers so th that's why most of the jewish uh, and, uh, and i hope some of them will uh, watch this video they are suffering because of this psychopath. They don't. They cannot be in peace with all human beings. They they don't even consider themselves part of humankind because as long as they are you know, the chosen uh, um, people for the, for this God, they they cannot be you know friendly, completely without any barrier, without any frontier, because in 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 their inner soul, they have been told they have been you know brainwashed for thousands of years that everybody uh, hates us everybody hates us but they don't recognize that their god is a psychopath and i re i remark uh, again that this is the same problem with uh, the protestants you know i have a a friend that is protestant i don't know maybe no say evangelistic or something like that and you know then he knows perfectly what is happening in, in palestine but the other day came a, a, a pastor, a, a priest from the USA, and he told him, no, 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 Israelis are the goods because it's written in the Bible. And we are Zionists. And I, I asked my friend, who are you, who are you going to believe? The, you know, the evidence of what is happening there in, in Palestine of, or your... Uh, your priest no 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 the bible is first okay this is the kind of man you know that is in a complete mess because he has no moral values he only 
uh, follows the rule that uh, gives him in the in the church. So that that's the problem. The problem is that most of the people believe be, believes before in a in a in a book like this that you know it's it's, it's the it, it's a psychopath um, fact facts and 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 dance that uh, in their own experience, and then it comes uh, Sigmund Freud, of course. That is another thing. Maybe you want to to add yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Let me add something. Um, uh, this is a very, uh, uh, this is a very intriguing approach and, uh, much of the conventional wisdom has said, well, look at all the, uh, look at all of the attacks on Judaism from the Christian world and from the outside world and look at, for example, the evidence of the Holocaust and of Nazism against the the uh, the extermination that the Jewish felt during the Holocaust. Now, uh, a deeper analysis, I believe, and the actual evidence shows that it was the satanic Zionist Jews, the ones who are really into uh, child sacrifice. The Sabbateans called yeah, them. Yeah, the, the, the Sabbateans, the ones based in London, who insisted to the Allies uh, and all along that the Holocaust was necessary uh, in order to uh, create the conditions for the creation of the state of Israel. And so the great mass of the of the uh, Jewish people, you know, be they Ashkenazi or Sephardic or whatever, uh, were, you know, victims of this, uh, some people call it the um, synagogue of Satan. So that is consistent with your analysis, I think, going all the way back to Babylon, that, well, uh, yeah, that Yahweh is a Babylonian god who is psychopathic, dualistic, uh, whatever the identity is, you know, whether Lucifer or Satan or Marduk or some other, you know, entity, it's psychopathic, it's dualistic, um, it's demonic. And, and anyway, I I just wanted to add that. Yeah. That, well, that, that thing. In fact, in the word Holocaust is Jewish. So so that word, uh, whichever were the numbers of Jews killed during the Second World War, it was a, a Jewish thing. Because as long as they are using the word that they were used. Uh, using uh, for thousands of years, when they um, they are talking about uh, Yahweh's uh, sacrifices, you know, it has to be Jewish. So that if you if you follow the the uh, Jewish history and you recognize that the same happened, the same thing happened uh, when they took Canaan in Moses' times. As I told you the other day, Moses killed 23,000 of their own uh, Jewish before conquering Canaan. So it's the same thing. Uh, if there were no Holocaust, there were no um, um, Jewish mi migration to, to, to Israel. No, because they, they, they were living very good in Germany, in Poland, in Hungary in North Africa. They had to create an excuse and uh, as I proved, they are a specialist in false flag operations. They do it, you know, they convince them, uh, their people to go there. So that a, a Jewish uh, religion is a, is a caste system. And I'm going to prove it, you know? I'm going to prove it using the book of Numbers, uh, eight uh, chapter, 
you know, in which, uh, you know, the, in the book of Numbers, uh, they explained uh, to the um, to the Jewish practice, practice, uh, practitioners, uh, and but um, especially to the rabbis, how they have to do, you know, uh, the ceremonies, okay? All it's, you know, very well written, you know, with a detail that is, you know, in a way, the way our state is uh, organized now is in a way of, of this uh, book of numbers and the, the Deuteronomy, you know, that are the, the two ones of the, the, the rules. But uh, let me read for you this setting up the lamps in which the Lord said to Moses, take the Levites, the Levites are the, the you know, the Moses tribe, okay? Remember that the Kohen are the followers of Aaron, that he was the, the first Pope of the Jewish, and Moses' uh, followers are uh, the Levites, you know, the tribe of Levi. Take the Levites from among all the Israelites and make them ceremonially clean. To purify them, do this. Sprinkle the water. No, I'm going to go <laughs> later. Okay, then the, the, the Levites are to lay their hands on the heads of the bulls, using one for a sin offering to the Lord and the other for a burnt offering to make atonement for the Levites. Half the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and then present them as a wave offering to the Lord. In this way, you are to set the Levites apart from the other Israelites and the Levites will be mine. Remember, the Levites will be mine. They are the chosen ones from all the, the, the Jewish. The Levites are the ones who are going to be very, very in touch with uh, Yahweh. The, this is the upper caste. You probably know that there are now um, uh, a huge uh, polemic in Israel because they want to the, this ultra-Orthodox to, to do the military exercise. Okay? And they are saying, no, no, no. This is not uh, this is not going to happen because in the Bible we say that the, they say that we are part of the church and we we are not in the military. Okay, okay. I I follow with this chapter. After you have purified the Levites and presented and presented them as a wave offering, they are to come to do their work at the tent of meeting. They are the Israelites. This is a very important thing, Alfred. They are the Israelites who are to be given holy to me. I have taken them as my own in place of the firstborn, the first male offspring from every Israelite woman. Every firstborn male in Israel, whether human or animal, is mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, he recognized it. I set them apart from for myself, and I have taken the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons in Israel. I repeat, repeat this. I have taken the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons in Israel. What does this mean? This means that the Levites has to do as you know the the bankers of of Yahweh because they are you know. You have in 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 the in the English speakers area the word Levi, isn't it? L A E V Y. This is a synonym of taxes, and we have in in the Spanish language the word leva. Do you know this word? Leva is uh, the commandment to get to the military. So leva, le, levi, levi is the same thing. Those are the ones, that's why they go. They don't go to the army, because they are the ones who collect the taxes. And here, they are, they are saying, they are taking, uh, Yahweh is taking the Levites instead of the firstborn of Israel. They are saying that if you don't do this, I'm going to take the firstborn of Israel as I did it in Egypt. And this is the whole trauma of the Jews, Alfred, my friend. Yahweh is uh, blackmailing the Jewish, and all the Jewish that are say are watching this video has to to recognize it. You are you you are 
kidnapped, uh, you, kidnapped by, by this psychopath, you are suffering this uh, Stockholm syndrome. And this is, there is no way to interpret this. Take this numbers eight, uh, the passage from uh, 12 to 18. You are going to watch it. It's crystal clear, Alfred. Yahweh is... Now, now, Rafa, right before the break, mm. you were talking about uh, 12 to 18 numbers mm. and the concept of the Jewish people being kidnapped mm. by or uh, tricked or manipulated or brainwashed by mm. Yahweh, by that dualism in a certain way. Could you explain that in a slightly different yeah. way? Yeah, I'm going to explain it um, through the Stockholm Syndrome. Okay. Have you ever heard about this? Yes, for sure? yes, okay. it's where the, uh, where the hostages identify with the captors. That's it, that's it. The thing is, is that when somebody is kidnapped, um, you know, the suffering, you know, and, and the, um, this state of being in a prison uh, without uh, any escape, you know, and uh, our mind, the, the human being mind, tries to uh, put in a positive way everything that happened to us. You know, if you have a family in which, you know, there are sexual abuse or that, anything, you try to understand you, your capture, okay? This is the, uh, the Stockholm uh, Syndrome, in which at the end, you know, the kidnapped starts to, to have the values of the of the kidnapper that's that's what it's happening with the jewish you know they have been kept they have the, uh, the captor is their own god that they remember that they, they they give a lot of presents and gifts to them everything everything but uh, you cannot uh, going to venerate another god this is the only thing that Yahweh wants uh, the Jews not to do it, okay? That's why when uh, Jesus came, this is dangerous because they are going to go with humankind. They are going to be healed of this trauma. That's why I'm saying that they are, uh, they are um, accepting the orders of the you know of the um, their psychopath, the psychopath, their you know the the capture, the kidnapper. That's it. And when you go to uh, 19th century, to Sigmund Freud in Vienna, in Austria, and you understand that, first of all, Sigmund Freud was Jewish. All uh, his first therapist uh, um, uh, clients uh, were Jewish. And when you understand that most of them have uh, suffered sexual abuse. And I'm going to do a parenthesis. I, I, I'm going to, uh, to tell you, to rec uh, recall that uh, the two first uh, Jewish kings, Saul and David, were both discovered by a priest and a prophet called Samuel, okay? I think it's in the King's books. I, I don't remember in which in which one of the of the books of the Bible is written. But if you if you read carefully, and this is now an interpretation. Okay, the whole thing I talked before is just you know the own words. Now I'm going to read between the lines. Okay, and this is my point because of what you, Kevin Annett, and everybody knows already. And we know for sure that all the kings have suffered sexual abuse. And this is the connection with nowadays, okay? We know that, for instance, Prince um, Charles in England uh, has uh, suffered sodomized by Lord Mountbatten. I don't know if you know. Yeah, you know. Okay, there are a lot of, of examples, but uh, Kevin Annett's court, natural law court, is proving like that this is normal in this uh, elite. And this is the proof that this pro uh, trauma generates, creates this kind of uh, psychopath minds in which they have no empathy. 
But when we uh, reread uh, these passages of how this Saul and David were discovered, you know, there is a sense that both were very beautiful, were, both were, um, you know, farmers. Um, one of them, uh, David, was playing the harp. You know, they are uh, describing, you know, an ephebo. This is something very Greek, you know, in a sense. And then, you know, they became, you, can you understand that uh, you, uh, they are going to choose a farmer, uh, a pastor, to, to, to go to, um, to be a king? And uh, I, I remark, it's a priest who uh, choose them so that they are the, the, the rabbis who are uh, above the politicians now and, and the elite. But going um, uh, um, coming to, to Sigmund Freud, uh, do you know who was his, uh, his first client, female cli client? It's it's a you know it's mythical in the in all this uh, psychoanalysis field. Her name was uh, Anna O. Ann O. And for years, the people didn't know who this woman was, you know. But I I discovered uh, for my book uh, in which I uh, my book Social Engineering for uh, Destroying Love that uh, this woman was. His her real name was Berta Pappenheim, and Berta Pappenheim was the leader of the first feminist movement in human history. That it was the Zionist fem, uh, feminine movement. So this Anna O has suffered sexual abuse, and my point is: okay, you are a Jewish. Your God is a psychopath that has uh, that tried to kill your father Isaac. Uh, he reclaimed, uh, you know, this uh, um, hierarchy of uh, priests in order to save the Jewish babies, as I re re remember. So, are you going to love or to hate this God? Okay, you are afraid of of him. You you are in panic of him. You don't love it, so that you have a you know a complete mess in your soul and in your brain. That is the the, the mere origin of uh, psychoanalysis. Uh, you probably uh, know who Osho is, this guru Osho. Yeah, Osho. Yeah, he he, has, he he was originally called Rajnish. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. He has a, a very um, a funny uh, sketch in which he says. In English, of course, but the, the word "fuck" is like God because it's in everything, <laughs> and I, I I agree with with him. I think that uh, they, the Jewish, has uh, substitute God by sex, because the thing is that uh, this Anna O that suffered for um, hysteria at that time, hysteria was healed by uh, masturbation. I don't know if you know, so that. He was, she was a, an, an hysterical, she was uh, treated with masturbation and then it comes all this sexology movement from the 50s and 60s that it's, you know, directly psychoanalysis. He, they put the point of uh, human suffering in which that you are, um, you know, uh, castrated, you know, in, your, in the sex, uh, you are frustrated on this. But uh, uh, as I am saying, is putting you know the enemy out because you can't deal with your, the real enemy. The real enemy is so powerful that if you don't follow uh, uh, its rule, its rules, Yahweh's rules, you are going to be marginalized from Jewish society. And then you you can you can see the same thing with communism. Who Karl Marx was. Karl Marx was a, a, a son of a rabbi also. I don't know if you know. He, his father was a rabbi, a Sabbatean rabbi. So what's the enemy for, for communism like uh, Lenin or Rosa Luxemburgo? Well, it's not, you know, usury because the, it, it, this is their tool. 
is not uh, Yahweh. Well, they, they call themselves atheists, but they, they don't renounce for uh, to Judaism itself. Even Woody Allen, he proclaims he is secular, you know, but he, he has a lot of respect for Jewish traditions, you know. This, this kind of uh, joking, you know, that uh, I'm not an, an atheist, but you, uh, he knows perfectly who has the power. So that what was the, the communist origin? Okay, it's the same thing as with uh, Sigmund Freud. Uh, the problem are the class, uh, the class of classes. Okay, it's not their um, their fa uh, fake god. They convert himself of uh, in atheists because atheism in, in itself is a Jewish thing. They reject God because God is bad. But what about Jesus God? That is love. Why Jesus uh, proclaimed it again and again that love was God or love is God? Uh, God is love because for uh, making the difference between Yahweh, because Yahweh never talked ab about love. What Jesus wanted to say is that, okay, God as the creator loves uh, its, its minions, uh, um, you know, their sons and, do and daughters. And this is the radical difference. And when you, you get to the origin of the gay movement, you find the same thing. Harry Hay, that was what, what was on of the founders of the gay movement, was communist and Jewish <laughs> and, and, and pedophilos also. And Allen Ginsberg, Jewish poet, and he was one of the leaders of the gay movement. So that the real thing, the real problem is Yahweh in itself. And when you go to the, you know, these modern uh, wars uh, in Middle East, you have the Jewish for sure, you have the Christ Christian Zionists. It's already a problem of religions, not God. Because as I told you the other day, if there is one God, how can all the world God worshippers are going to fight against one and the others? It's nonsense. It's absurd. Only if there is one fake God could this worse happen. Because if not, all the real Muslims, real Christians, and real Jewish also that have they have a mystic um, feeling, they are in peace. The, those are the ones there with the dualistic mind, the, this mind that uh, thinks in, in opposite things, you know, men and women, uh, Christians and Muslims, or heterosexuals, heterosexuals uh, homosexuals, those that are labeling the people, creating minority, minorities that are not real, it's just artificial, those are the ones who create the class of classes, the, the war on sexes, whatever or the war on religions. But I insist, all the problems comes from the ancient tes testament. And what Jesus wanted to, to, say, uh, to do is just uh, knowing you know, the tradition, because he comes from this tradition, he, he wanted to, to, cut, to cut from this evil God into another way of uh, connecting with the real God. And this is the real thing for the Jew Jewish people and Christian Zionists, is to change this kind of um, behavior and this kind of, of worshiping to this God. That is nonsense. And I think that uh, in the moment in which this topic that seems to be very spiritual uh, converted itself in a political thing, in the way that they discuss this in the United Nations, for instance, all things will get solved because usually comes from this, as I proved the, the other day, you know, the war on sexes, the war, uh, the class of classes, everything comes from, from Yahweh. The moment in which we say, okay, Yahweh, Lucifer, uh, had its days here in pla on planet Earth, but not anymore. This is the, the kingdom of God, of the, the, the creator of all the universe. There will be another, uh, another kind of relationships here in, in this planet. No, I, I can see what you're saying. I can also see that uh, the, 
the 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 barriers and the education are going to depend on humanity's awakening to unity consciousness mm. because uh, quote religion is protected under the universal declaration of human rights so those that are profiting by the Jewish religion you know under the guise of it mm. they're profiting for example uh, there are many studies that show that um, uh, there's that show that the new world order, quote unquote, is mm. actually the manifestation of the protocols of the elders of Zion, so that there is uh, a, a tremendous, and I think that you uh, alluded to it, illicit jumping of the queue or illicit land grabs and takeovers by Zionist elements throughout the world, including in North America. If you look mm. at all of the universities, mm. uh, the presidents of the Ivy Leagues, you know, and uh, much of the student body all of a sudden is Jewish. And from what I understand, the Israelis get key positions and then they give, they give scholarships to other Israelis. I mean, it's, it's a real... Mm -hmm. It's a real black market. Yeah. And from what I understand, mm. uh, the Israelis, there's uh, Israeli guerrillas that are operating as part of the New World Order in the gang stalking and in the electronic harassment inside of the United States. They operate as part of Homeland Security. And they first uh, started this initially with the assassination of John Kennedy. And then it became very big with 9-11. Uh, so that this is really, an Israeli is just shredding the yeah. United States uh, using an advanced technology as they did with Operation Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, so you have the, the, the satanic Judaism that comes down from Babylon through manifesting in Israel, he who fights against God, and now is devouring the United States, to some extent Canada, as the parasite. I, I just wanted to give you that, that. I think that your insights are totally valid, and I'm, and I'm just saying that, that, uh, 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 that they are extremely valid, <laughs> because... Yeah. What, what's happening at the underground level is alarming. Yeah, but uh, mm, all my, my, my work, Alfred, is focused on solution. Yeah, okay, okay solution. Okay, okay. Uh, now we know how mm, these people that maybe mm, some of them, they are watching us because as I, I told you in the beginning uh, of the interview, there is no difference between uh, a Jewish and anybody. There are a lot of Jews that are interested in extraterrestrials, you know, in secret uh, uh, technologies. I have I have met some Jews, you know, that they were very uh, in the um, conspiracy theory, you know. There are people like us in, in Israel, in Argentina, in, in Chile, Jews, you, I mean. The thing is that uh, we cannot solve this whole problem from the moment in which they have the power of using money, okay, and, and usually, this is the real, the, the 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 hardcore of the of the problem that I think is going to to be solved by the BRICS and all this gold conspiracy, okay. But you and I, what can we do in, in this topic? Well, it's, I, it's above our our, our power, okay. No, I, I I think that what that people like you and I can do is we can, number one, as we're doing right now, we can expose, uh, yeah. number one. Number two, we can participate as citizens mm -hmm. in the in the natural justice process. Yeah, that's and it. Citizen, okay. Citizens tri tribunals of conscience. Because it may not be to the same extent in Spain, but in North America, particularly in the United States, the Zionists 
have been like a parasite that has infiltrated the heart of the nation and is destroying it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my point. My point is, you know, that a, any Jewish all around the world, if uh, El Mossad calls them, they have to do what El Mossad uh, tells them to do. This is a, a, a character, a, a role that is called Sajanim. Any Jewish is a Sajanim. That means something like a, a, an slept cell. We can we can uh, yeah, yeah. call it sleeper call it. cell, a, a sleep cell, sleeper that's cell. It. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And this is the point. The point is telling your uh, Jewish friends because uh, in the USA, in Canada, in Argentina, in a lot of countries, and you know, I have followers there in Israel that are Jewish. The thing is that telling them, okay, we want you inside humankind not outside i we don't have anything with you we love you we we we, we want you inside not outside in your uh, uh, groups with your paranoia that everybody hates me no 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 this is not true the only thing that we want you to do is say no to el mossad el mossad is this psychopath uh, god and you have to be brave enough to say no we are not going to do evil things that corrupt society and do wrong things to to humankind and this is the the central point uh, alfred because you know there are people you know in 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 adl and uh, bring uh, bring my breed and all these lodges and they are the rich man but you know the the, the power of uh, judaism is you know in the roots in the a lot of people who are working for them in hollywood in the business uh, uh, sphere in you know uh, the people who rent uh, the the cars for these bombs and you know the apartments and so on you know the moment in which the, the jewish normal jewish people says no more to El Mossad, things are going to change, you know, and that's why I I gave this interview to you because the real important thing is going to the point of understanding the Jewish trauma, and this is how we we have to call it. Let's make a meme out of of this Jewish trauma. They are traumatized, and I repeat, I remark, it is not only. Uh, for the Jewish, but also for the Christian Zionists that maybe are worse there in the USA and, and, and in Canada. There are a lot of them that are much more fanatics even than, than the Jewish ones, you know? And this is the thing. We have to talk about God. What's God? Okay, let's go to the Bible. Do you think that God is going to allow to kill thousands of Egyptians, maybe? Do you really think so? What? Which kind uh, of God are you paying tribute, <laughs> which one are you paying uh, taxes to? And things uh, will um, uh, get better the moment in which we approach, you know, the central core of, of, the, of the problem, that is this spiritual problem, the, you know, the, this uh, misunderstanding of what really uh, God is. That's my point, Alfred. Right. And so... What, what sort of programs and solutions the, would you propose uh, uh, not only for those of us who are the awakening community, both mm. in the wider world and the awakening yeah. community inside the Jewish community yeah. that is what? walking away from this dualistic, psychotic mm. Maybe they, they're not willing yet to recognize that Yahweh is psychotic. What, how, how do we, what, what sort of programs do you propose? Well, now I am working on my uh, next book that is uh, around values, human values. My answer to your question is, well, in which field all human beings get united? Which are the, the things and the concepts in which we are, we have all to be, um, uh, we have to join all together. 
Those are the values. You know, we have to discover, and not, it's not kind of discovering, it's just rediscovering, in which uh, concepts we, uh, you know, an Indian from Ecuador and another from Canada and someone in the North Pole and in India and in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Marruecos, in, uh, in every country, the kind of things that are good and are bad. And I, I am, in a way, in, in the same path as, as Mark Passio that you interviewed with the other. Oh, yeah, Mark. I, I am following my own route. I am, you know, uh, researching on the true origins of justice, truth, you know, manipulator, uh, you know, uh, beauty, harmony, discovering, you know, the real concept, the values, and uh, above all, the hierarchy of values, because we have a problem in which we, 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 we say that uh, everything is equal, and this is not truth. We have to, to for instance, this, this is an example, for instance, you know, the, uh, if you take the fidelity or lo loyalty as, a, as, a, an, as an absolute power, um, value, you, you are a, a radical Muslim, for instance, or you are a, a Jewish radical, and someone in your church in the synagogue calls you, ah, if you are loyal to uh, our God, you have to do this, you have to put this bomb. Okay, loyalty is a value, but there are a higher values than your loyalty, that this is the, the respect for human life, justice, truth, okay? And this is my point. What I am doing now, I have done some videos uh, um, around these topics, and now, till now to February, I am going to uh, finish another book in that I explore these concepts. And in this concept, we have to join all together. And no Jewish or no uh, Muslim can say, uh, uh, can deny that this is the truth. And this is my point. This is my kind of, of making the solution. Real. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, do you, uh, do you feel that, that, uh, that, that you've covered, uh, everything that, that, uh, you wanted to say? I know that, yeah. that, that you wanted to talk about Groucho Marx, Woody yeah. Allen, Bruce Springsteen. Well, uh, do you, do, do you feel that, that you've, uh, covered just about everything that, yeah, yes, you yes. Uh, I, uh, I would like to talk more about Woody Allen uh, in another uh, occasion. Okay. Uh, but I want to uh, recommend one of, of his films. Uh, its title in Spanish is Delitos and Faltas. In English, it's Crimes and Miss the Minors. Yes. Okay. It's a 1989 film huh? in which. He depicts, uh, you know, a crime, a crime by a, a Jewish. He, um, uh, uh, he contracts his brother that is a, a mafia, a, a, a mafioso, to kill his uh, lover that is played by Angelica Houston. Okay, and you know the the name of the of the killer is Judah. <laughs> he uses this word <laughs> Judah, and. Uh, take uh, notice of, uh, about uh, his latest speech in which, you know, he free himself of, himself of uh, the, the feeling of guilty, you know, because this is, you know, he goes deep into Jewish mind. But I recommend all uh, Goody Allen's films uh, because, you, uh, as I said the other day, uh, you are going to, uh, to watch openly what is hidden about the Jewish uh, traumas because... Uh, Woody Allen is only, you know, explaining and making jokes out of his own uh, obsessions and and traumas. Right. And by the way, I I I feel very comfortable about the interview, but I want to do another that will be the last for a couple of months okay. about war on sexes. About, about what? War on sexes. About. Uh, oh, they, sex, they, sex they the war sex. between sexes. Between sexes. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, war between uh, sexes. Uh, yeah. yeah, Woody Allen is a good name to mention about the war between the the war between sexes, because of course they're they're 
there's some research that uh, that has stated that he has been involved in 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 abusing underage yeah. women as well, underage girls, and the whole war between him and and at mm. least one of his yeah. uh, one of his wives, yeah, and uh, and where he adopted one of his children, yeah, is uh, yeah. That, yeah, that whole series. We, we can take a lot of notes about uh, Woody Allen's films because, as I told you before, it's openly clear. <laughs> yeah, but this is a good but, topic to talk yeah, about yeah. Uh, feminism and and social engineer for destroying love because I think that uh, maybe there are some things that I from here from here from Spain I can tell you yeah. that maybe North America. Because you are suffering this for m much more time, yeah. you cannot even um, watch it. Because the thing is that the more you are uh, traumatized by this trauma of explaining history, uh, summarizing up, explaining history through the war between sexes, that maybe there are people who cannot imagine that all this is a filth, is a you know, it's a lie, and explaining how this social engineers have done this work, me, myself, as a journalist, as a creator of this, mm -hmm. what I call crusades, you know, social mm -hmm. crusades uh, in the way of Yahweh, <laughs> because uh, as I told you, as I explained it to you, it's all in the Bible, you know, the kind of yeah. works of uh, false flock operations and social engineering <laughs> is all written in the Bible, it's Kabbalistic, it's Kabbalistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, just to go back to your to to your point now about doing that, uh, I would like to think that we could do uh, interviews on each of your four iconoclastic books. Now, I know that we've done one on on the secret Hollywood, yeah. and now we're going to do one on the war between the sexes, which is all also one of your books. Correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I would love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that'll leave us two more for your two books, and then one more even for the for the other un, un unwritten book, because I think it's very important to bring your perspective to the North American audience, uh, which is a perhaps more shielded, and they're they're inside a certain conventional thinking. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. My point is that maybe uh, a point of view outside yeah. your your atmosphere will be yeah. mm, refreshing in the way that right. you are so you know you are you and you are living in Canada, but the people in the USA, you know, they are so frustrated with oh, what know. is happening now that yeah. they can they can only think about you know all the, the this new paranoia. But yeah, you know, I, I, here from Spain, uh, and the thing is that as long as I am researching this conspiracy yeah. theory from uh, 1999, you know, as a journalist, and uh, as long as I, I've been following Prison Planet, Rens, and these marvelous um, yeah. sites in English, I have done, you know, and an, um, I have advanced what was going to happen here in Spain. But at the same time, I can give, you know, the my point on how this New World Order agenda is putting in place in, in, in a different perspective at the same time. Yeah, well, well, well yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, the the U.S. seems to be, and, and the Americans are frustrated because they're a nation that has been in some sense covertly conquered, taken over, and now being destroyed by the satanic Jews. Yeah. And by, and, and so this goes directly back to our, two-part series going back to Babylon, yeah. the birth of, of the of the satanic Jews there, yeah. Yahweh is the demonic God, fast forward to Israel, he who fights against God, fast forward to now, yeah. tra trying to heal this. What final thoughts in conclusion to this two-part series on, uh, on Yahweh, the demonic uh, uh, the demonic small G God and uh, the trauma to the uh, Jewish soul and the consequence trauma to the world. What do you do you have for us? Yes.
Yes, definitely. Is that is this sort unity? The real value is unity. God is unity, and our goal, you and mine and Kevin added, is getting humanity unite, so that what's uh, Lucifer Yahweh's uh, goal? Divide and conquer. This is the, the the real thing. The real thing. Those who are in you know in the way of uh, peace and you know uh, converting this planet into a paradise. Our goal is creating unity, and the evil forces they are trying to do the opposite thing: divide and creating wars. It's that simple. Our, our, all our research, our you know, documents, files, video, as a, all this path of truth is focusing on creating unity, and this is the whole point. In the moment in which we human beings. Uh, see ourselves as a one nation with local cultural differences no matter only if if the if they if they touch you know the real values they will be uh, deleted but if not it, it gets uh, our culture rich richer so that we are in the moment in which we have to create uh, our goal is to create a movement that demands unity for humankind and overpass whatever in institutions that creates division, religions, political parties, social movements. Okay, no matter if you are uh, defending something is that is good that could be good, but at the same time you are creating wars. This is not good. Unity is above all the values, beside uh, truth and justice, for sure, and freedom. That's it. Well, thank you very much. And we really appreciate your taking uh, time out to be with us, mm. uh, Rafa. And, and we really appreciate your uh, coming forward to to participate with us in this series of interviews mm. that is sharing your work uh, mm. with the with the English speaking world. Thank mm. you again. I appreciate so much what you are doing in different fields, you know, in extraterrestrial scene with Kevin Annett. And also appreciate a lot of your interviews and I ha I want to to say hello to Mark Passio and to oh, recommend recommend all this all the viewers or the public of this video that goes to to Mark Passio because he has a lot of things to do. I, I love the way he uh, talks English. You know, it, for me, it's something <laughs> like a course in English because he explains so so well. You know, he pronounced so perfectly that for me, at the same moment it, it, that I am, you know, watching a video, I am learning a lot of English. You know, this oh, excellent! Like excellent. David Ike for me, it's all all. all <laughs> And not one that I don't know. <laughs> so, so that you know that a lot of people we are learning English with this with this kind of videos. It's not only because of of the information. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Thank, thank you so much, Alfred, for your work. Thank you.